yo, bring that back, boy. Nobody safe. Hold up. Hold up. Nobody safe. Hold up. Hold up. Nobody safe. Hold up. Nobody safe. Hold up. Sink in three, Yo. two, one. Bring that clap. back, boy. Clap. Nobody clap. safe. All right. So even though uh, we, I messed up the group. Oh, wait. I got to redo the intro. Yeah, you're, you're not safe here or something like that. I don't know. Wear a condom when you watch this podcast because you want to be safe or I don't know. Anyway, let's start off with uh, how, how do you... First off, let's start off with the Nintendo nerd over here. How do you feel about the PS5 and the um, Xbox Scarlet? The and the Xbox Scarlet is a project name, by the way. Okay. I'm saying, how do you feel about it so far? Oh wait, let me give you a basic rundown of like the features so far. The Xbox uh, Scarlet, they're saying so far that their console is gonna be like their main draw-in features is gonna be that it's backwards compatible with every con- Xbox console. So if you have an Xbox original game like if you have a like let me show you. Like this is what I mean by Xbox One. Like this Xbox to show y'all too. Like if you have an Xbox original game like that old wait hold up. Let me all uh, flex with the game I don't play. <laughs> Played it for the background of a podcast one time and never touched the game again. <laughs> But, like, that old original Xbox is hey, Super Mario Maker. Last time I opened this, and the first time I opened this was at least three months far. <laughs> wow. Wow. But, and you like, haven't even discovered it. But, like, Xbox uh, 360, Xbox One, Xbox Original, and Xbox Scarlet games will all be playable on that console by inserting the CD. That's number one. Uh, it was another selling point. They had, oh, cloud game. Cloud play. Like, for example, I can play it on my phone, on my laptop. I don't have to actually have my Xbox on or be in front of it. I could, like, cloud save and transport my own saves and stuff like that. One interesting feature I think would be great if they add... You know how, like, when you use an emulator, you can save it at the exact moment, like, when you were doing whatever? Save state, yes. Yeah, Hmm. no. Yeah, save stating. Like, save stating the entire game. If they add that... Oh my goodness, that's gonna be a great selling point, cause there are casuals like me who would love a feature like that. You for getting one more? Yeah, but you only yeah, got you know one. Exactly. And, um, the PS5, from what you know I that. from what I saw and what I looked up, so none of y'all patronize me or try and like attack me in the comments section. From what I saw, the selling main selling point so far of the PS5 is out of the box the first playstation 5 is going to be psvr ready it's going to be backwards compatible with playstation 4 games and it was something else i don't remember currently at this moment and every cloud other gaming, ps console cloud gaming too. no no that's that was the xbox oh. but yeah so how do you what are your feelings on a ps5 versus the xbox scarlet ps uh ps uh, xbox scarlet um i think it's great Oh my god, this Xbox fan girl over here. Uh-huh. It's absolutely great that they're going to have it backwards compatible for every Xbox, including the original. So Yeah, I have an original Xbox, so yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> I'm just, just going to go on eBay and, uh, oh, you know what's one thing I just thought about? You know how people what? like sell older games on eBay and stuff like that? Yeah. The value of those old school games are gonna rise a lot. So like those old school Halo originals, or oh, have an unopened copy of Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> that's not for but the P. Those- that's not for the Xbox. What's yeah. wrong with for you? The Xbox original. But the yep. value in those games are gonna go up through the roof, completely bonkers because their resale value is going to be higher because now you can play it on a modern console so you don't have to have an Xbox original or a, um, what is it called, the Duke controller? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to have one of those controllers. Now you can play it on a more modern, ergonomic, slurgo slogging controller. And uh, that's one thing that I think is good because that makes the Xbox 
Scarlet Library uh, 100 times larger than the uh, than the Desolate <laughs> Xbox One's uh, library. That makes the library way large, library of playable games way larger because that's four generations of games. The Xbox Scarlet, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and Xbox Original. Also, can we, can we think for a second? Who is naming these consoles? What? I, okay, Xbox. Got it. Xbox 360. What? Okay, there's a philosophy behind the name. Cool. Xbox One. Well, I trust it was going to be Xbox 720. 720? <laughs> oh, God. Ah. Ah, it hurts. PlayStation. Simple. PlayStation. PlayStation 2. PlayStation 3. PlayStation 4. So, since the first one doesn't have anything after, we refer to it as a PlayStation 1. Xbox. Well, the PlayStation X, as some people call it, some nerds call it. I don't know who those nerds are. Yeah. <laughs> or, like... You could just say like the original PlayStation with Xbox. I gotta add all these. I gotta either say Xbox One. Oh no no no! There's an Xbox One already. The, the Xbox Original. Now I gotta yo. If they name the next Xbox the Xbox Original, I am officially done with my this off. Like yo, if they do that, if they actually name the next Xbox the Xbox Original, I'm uh, like. <laughs> I, like, Kingdom I would, Hearts over. Like, I would just... <laughs> Kingdom Hearts all over again. I'm sorry, the naming convention. Yo, what if they named the next Xbox the Xbox Negative Zero? If they name the Xbox the Xbox Original or the Xbox Negative Zero, I'm just done. <laughs> or if they name it the Xbox One Two, I'm done. I'm mm -hmm. done. Or those grand fraction when you see it from a, or the Kingdom Hearts Nintendo games, <laughs> like they like it's just fractured. Or like, have you ever like tried to follow the chronology of all the Mario games put together? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> One, oh, yeah, two, that's three, fine. world. No, 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 um, sixty four side games, including what? the side games. So Mario oh. plays aces, all oh, yeah, the strikers. That. Yeah. There's a video. There's actually a video on that. So I know, maybe that's what I'm talking about. Like trying to fit. Like yo, like yo. Come on, come on, Xbox. But anyway, you keep going, Caesar, on how you uh wanna wanna marry your Xbox. Well, I still do. I still do. If it try to beat me, beat my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, okay, backwards, combat, backwards compatibility, great, absolutely great. All Xbox games from Xbox One to original. Um, the question is the graphics for the Xbox originals. And nope, you're not gonna upgrade it. I'm telling yeah. you now. Because with the 360 games, they did not upgrade anything. It's on. It's up to the companies. Because, you know, um, Black Ops, the original Call of Duty Black Ops and Modern Warfare still get updates to this day, the 360 versions. So, Wait, yeah. seriously? Even yeah. though they got a new version of Modern Warfare out for some reason? Oh, God, no. That game is terrible. I, I forgot to send y'all the video, but... That game is literally messing up people's Xboxes. Not not only their PCs, but their Xboxes. Okay, we got nine minutes left, so yeah, be aware. Not only their PCs, but their Xboxes. Uh, for a game to brick your Xbox, that is infuriating. Wow. That is just completely infuriating. But yeah, they still update like... Even the digital of, copy? No, like a physical copy. Like yeah. Xbox, like they'll those companies still update those games. Some companies, cause like, cause there's a, still a scene of people playing uh Black Ops to this day. So yeah. All right. So real quick, uh, the GameStop redesign. Yeah, we can talk about that in ten minutes. The GameStop redesign. How do y'all feel about it? How do y'all feel? Do y'all feel? It's mm. fine. I feel like it's a good. I feel like it's a good idea. However, there's gonna be a lot of loitering, honestly. All right, cool, cool, cool. Alpha Priest. Well, how do you feel about it? If you feel, because I don't. Well, I like how they're updating. 
in terms of the style of the, the shop but they're inside the shop so it looks good um, doesn't look what it used to be <laughs> a decade ago so my thing about about the new redesign is it's a little bit too late number one but i'm pretty sure you heard everybody say that my thing about it is if i'm just sitting in the store for an hour how does that help your sales just think uh, about it Cause you're helping me sit down because <laughs> think about it there's no. gonna be moms that pull this move hey little timmy go in the GameStop and uh let me cut this off for a minute or two Hey, little Timmy, go into GameStop, uh, chill out there for a couple minutes, and Mommy will come get you after she finishes shopping. And little Timmy's going to be in there all day playing video games for free as a free babysitting service without buying anything, taking up space, uh, changing the store image, because that's what people are going to look at it. When moms find out about this idea like when this idea becomes general knowledge and like i say moms find out about it that's exactly what they're gonna do and you know what that's gonna turn it into oh i'm bringing my kids to the mall go to gamestop and if you if i come back in the store people say you behave then i'll buy you a game or something or i'll buy you one of those japanese snacks or something because and then 12 minutes later the store is just destroyed yeah and then the stores is are just gonna be overwhelmed with little kids like asking why doesn't this GameCube have Fortnite on it? Poor millennials. <laughs> <laughs> mean Gen Z, not a millennial man. Like, ew, this GameCube can't download Fortnite. Can it even cloud save? Nigga, what? Where's the extra patches? <laughs> like, Super Mario yeah. Sunshine, where's the extra patches? No, 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 oh, we're no, wait, better question. Playing... We're Sonic. No, it playing melee. Okay, this game is cool and all, but when are they gonna patch chain grabbing? Never. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'm playing Super Smash Brothers. Wait, where's Sonic? Where's Snake? Where's uh Krom? Where's my Where, foot? It... Where's my foot waifu? I mean, I mean Corin. Wait, why doesn't Mario have the water thing on his back? And where's Cappy? The hell is this but, <laughs> but like yeah like how does like they need to come up with a realistic way to convert that into sales and at the same time one thing they could do is charge people and say look um to get in to oh that would that's probably what they're gonna do because the gaming part is gonna like the idea is generally speaking is gonna be in the backs of the stores so what they're probably gonna probably gonna do and this is just me having common sense what they're probably gonna do is say hey little if little timmy stays in here he has to pay five dollar dollars if little timmy yet wants to stay in here she has to pay five dollars like you have to pay five dollars something simple something a kid can afford because that's who's gonna want to be there kids teenagers and younger people because grown men like me they gotta go to work what why would i go to gamestop just to chill like come on let's think let's think about this logically i'll play fortnite on the gamecube <laughs> yeah i try playing try playing brawlhalla with a gamecube controller and then imagine fortnite where you gotta have twitch reaction <laughs> oh boy wonderful yeah. One but, of the anime yeah. characters that do this. Any uh, any other closing thoughts on this uh topic about GameStop's redesign? Nope. Mm. It's gonna burn. <laughs> Did you just say it's yeah. gonna burn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moms, don't let don't pretend that GameStop's your babysitter. Either get the game or get yourself out. Like seriously, exactly. buy yourself the new Sonic movie video game. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> it's just a matter of time till they actually make a Sonic movie video game. That's the sad part. <laughs> yeah. Or until or until they like just plagiarize a uh, Mario Kart tour. And just make it <laughs> where you gotta pay for the whole dang thing. Like microtransactions. Oh, like yeah, make it like Mario Kart Tour. Like, oh, you wanna play the game? Ha <laughs> ha. Fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, you wanna play oh Sonic Team Racing, you wanna play a Sonic? Nah, you gotta pay for that. Okay, so let me, let me uh, just play as Knuckles. Oh, no, you gotta pay for that too. Okay, shout out uh, to you. Gotta the pay original, for that too. Let me pay. You know what? 
Sorry, you want the original that. designs of Sonic? You gotta pay for that. Pay for that. Oh, you wanna play as Big the Cat? You gotta pay for that. Who the f who's gonna play the pin as Big the Cat? Oh, you want the backgrounds? Oh, you gotta pay for that. Nick! Oh, you wanna actually oh. use a cart? No, you gotta pay for that. No, so wait, hold on. You wanna you you wanna press start? Gotta pay for that. You gotta pay for that. Oh, you wanna <laughs> actually use your touch screen? Gotta pay for that. Okay, exit the app. Nah, you still gotta pay to use your touch screen. <laughs> like, bro, what? You gotta what pay to hell? leave the app. <laughs> you gotta pay to leave the app. Like, oh, you wanna use your home screen button? Oh, you gotta pay for that. Like, yo, dude, like, damn, I can't even access my phone. Like, all right, let me let me hard reset my phone. Hard resets phone. You wanna turn you gotta your phone pay for that. On? You wanna turn your phone back on? You gotta mail us. And guess what you gotta do before you mail us? You gotta pay, pay for that. Ass. Then you gotta pay us to pay UPS to mail it. What? <laughs> then we're gonna have somebody run over here in Pumas and deliver it to you by hand. Again, bring the old Sonic movie designed. That's the mail delivery. Also, I right. it hasn't been nine minutes yet. Yeah, just about. Okay. Now I'm keeping track of time. Don't worry about it. But, all uh, right. Yeah. That that's all the closing thoughts about their redesign. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm a, I'm a end the meeting and then bring it back. All right. So this is so for those of you listening on Anchor or like other sites like that, this is where the commercial is gonna commercial break is gonna go the sponsor segment. So yeah, hashtag I'm a sellout. Sinking Trey Dos Uno. Clap clap clap. All righty guys. <clears throat> so now that we're back from that sponsored segment. Uh, let's make fun of Sonic real quick and his redesign. So, uh, Matthew, you you give me your feelings on the Sonic redesign since you're the biggest Thank Sonic you. I know. Anyway, ba back in back in August of August or July of this year, we were blessed with the beauty that was the meow design for Sonic. Mhm. Mm and then. Uh, and then a few uh, months later, yeah. well, bam, we got this, this beauty, this horrifying. <laughs> no, Caesar, this is horrifying. This no. one, no, this one. Horrible. While it's decent, honestly, over time, I got, I pretty much gotten used to this design because really, this is the director's Sonic. Because let's face it, let's face it. Yeah, sure, fans of Sonic are gonna be disappointed with the designs and all that, but really. We survived 06, we survived Boom, and we most certainly survived Sonic 4 with the green eyes. So yeah, while this is good, I would have liked it if we went with this. But on the other hand, this one doesn't look like Roadkill. So yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, they're a business. So, like, at least, like, one thing I can compliment them on, whoever the hell is making this movie, is they realize that their audiences get are gamers, so they realize that there are well not entirely gamers but majority yeah. gamers. So they realize let's cater to our audience and cater to the people who are actually gonna come watch this movie, because like you said, it's the director, it's the director's movie, and all they did was change the design of Sonic. So at the end of the day, I'm not gonna like it because it's a Sonic movie. That's number one. Let me put that out there. I don't like Sonic at all. Period. Point blank. But at the end of the day, again, like I said, it's the director of Sonic. So whoever wrote the script, whoever wrote Sonic, that's how Sonic's gonna come off. They didn't go and refilm the whole movie. They just redid Sonic's design and Control C, Control V, his model over all the different scenes and stuff. Like that's the part people I feel like from what I've seen, like of other people talking about it, don't realize mostly like it's it's still the director Sonic. Like, however he directs the movie and directs the script, that's how Sonic is going to end up. And another thing I mentioned for the third time, because I, I love messing up recordings, just ask uh, the fake C's, wherever he is at uh, the yeah. screen. Yeah, I do it on purpose, completely. <laughs> but anyway, uh... Like, the slot they originally had, it was supposed to be coming out around now, if not already. Like, it was supposed to get an end-of-the-year slot. And the metaphor I gave earlier is an uh, end-of-the-year slot, giving up an end-of-the-year slot 
is like a rapper going from performing at the Rolling Loud, um, Powerhouse, whatever, to record, to doing a, I mean, not recording, from doing a show at Rolling Loud or like a Summer Jam, going from doing that, declining that on purpose just so he could do a concert at Jimmy John's or the MTV Awards, Jane Jack's Burger. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> okay, Matthew. Somebody doesn't like the MTV. Like a television. <laughs> Yo, the BET Awards are funny. Nobody cares about a actual BET award. And the battle rap they had this year. Oh my God. They basically just gave that man twenty five thousand, a quarter million dollars for free. <laughs> but that's another topic. Y'all like really? stuff like that. But uh, anyway, yeah. But like you, like I was saying, like business wise, giving up that slot really means a lot in, in the movie industry. Apparently, because when I really took a second to think about it, I was like, you know what? That makes sense. Because guess what? This is the primary time of year. Hey, get in that hydration in. This is really a primary time of year where, like, people go to see movies. Like, with girlfriends, um, boyfriends, paws, all that stuff. Because, oh, Field family, trips. period, school trips. Yeah, because guess what? It's, it's the holiday season. Thanksgiving, Christmas, other religions. I'm American. I'm sorry. I'm gonna educate it. Uh, Kwanzaa movies. Anybody? Anybody going to watch a movie? Stop that offending you! <laughs> Stop offending you, aggressive child. <laughs> yo, yo. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me tell them. Wait, Matthew. You want to tell them your part of the story behind aggressive child? Nah, nah. nah you go part? ahead. Besides, uh, we got our topic with the new Ooh. Sonic design. Wait, real quick, real quick. Okay, so <laughs> one day, one day, the the bus driver, like I was sleeping and I put my jacket over me and she thought I was taking my seatbelt off and using that to cover me taking a seatbelt off. So she went and took my jacket. And mind you, this is like an SUV car sedan. So I went up to the front of the bus. I was like, miss, it's cold in this car. Y'all refuse to turn the heat on. Give me my jacket back. She said no. So, and I didn't even touch her. I reached past her, grabbed my jacket, went to the back of the bus, put my seatbelt back on, went to sleep. And she told my, my father that I hit her and told my teacher that I don't want this aggressive child on my bus. My teacher and everybody in the class was looking at her like, are you okay? <laughs> like, Will's first thing, Will looked at me and was like, Yo, <laughs> <out well. laughs> like, like, if you listen to what this lady was saying, like, if you ask any of the other two kids that were on the bus, because I live in Queens, and they basically had, I had to ride from Queens all the way to Manhattan. If you ask the other two kids on the bus, and then ask her, or the, ask, if you ask the bus driver or the other two kids on the bus, or ask her how I was on the bus, their story would be, oh no, Weldon's fine. He basically sits to the side and keeps to himself. Like, he'll talk here and there, but that's about it. Her version was, oh my god, I was the devil. I was El Diablo in the back of the bus. <laughs> to her, I was in the back of the bus snorting cocaine, just shooting up heroin, busting my gun at the window, using the school bus route to be drive by. <laughs> <laughs> the new drive by, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, hey, Marty, like, what's that boy doing on a bus? Go. Oh, crap, let me get down. What's that boy doing on a school bus? <laughs> like, oh, no, it's a school bus. <laughs> <of death. laughs> <laughs> like, she was acting like I was recording videos of me doing, like, all the worst things. Like, throwing eggs out the window with, and grenade eggs and grenades. <laughs> like, yo, her story of me made everybody say, yo, well, then. You need, you need some milk. <laughs> yo, yo, and when, when, when my teacher will, when he told this story to the class, they were just, 
dying. <laughs> and she said, wait, no, this is the funny one. She said I was kicking people on the bus because they because I thought they were talking to me. Wait, what? <laughs> She said that I was kicking kids on the bus because I thought they were talking too much. I was like, huh? I didn't put my feet on nobody on that bus. And the kid she said that I kicked, he even said, like, no, he, he didn't kick me at all. <laughs> like, everybody else on the bus was like, uh, that, that child never put his hands on anybody else on the bus. Like, like oh my goodness. Like, her story of me and everybody else's story was two different things. Like in her story, I was like the Joker, <laughs> black. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was in the back of the bus being Mr. Pickle, <laughs> worshiping. <laughs> I was, I was in the back of the bus drawing six point stars on the windows and blood <laughs> of puppies. <laughs> Like to her, I was just a young villain. <laughs> like to her, I was just like baby Ben or something. I don't know. Ah, uh, uh, now we got all those good times out of the way. Let's focus on the good times on how we were miserable with this. Wait, so the, the brush driver let let her just continue talking to you like that, talking lies to No. No, she wasn't saying this to me. She was saying no, this to our teacher. Like, that's what I'm saying. Right? The M no, it was the um. Yeah. It was the matron. The bus driver, like I said, the bus driver was like he he keeps to himself. Everybody else on the bus was like he keeps to himself. Her, oh no 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 no. This is Alistair <laughs> Cole part two right here. <laughs> like, like Marilyn Manson listener. This is the Senate based on him. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, he's he's the sixth descendant that nobody <laughs> ever met. <laughs> like descent, like he's the main star of Descendants Three. <laughs> you see him in the background every time. He's just lurking. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." When Musafa died, he wasn't the person in the theater crying. He was the person in the theater. <laughs> yes. Hey, 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 whoever's working the movie, you can rewind that real quick. Like, <laughs> like according to her, like, like, yo, the story, the picture she was painting was just so hilarious. It was just insane. We were oh. like, uh, okay. <laughs> ah, good times, good times. <laughs> But uh, speaking of good times as a kid, let's talk about YouTube's kids. Yeah, YouTube because you little jerks YouTube. ruined YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so YouTube, give. I, I say I called you YouTube. So um, Blue M64 production. And okay, so right basically, a few days ago, YouTube. Well, they got sued by the FTC, right? Yes, they got sued because they were tracking kids and giving them advertisements. So instead of trying to fix the problems, they decided to butt rape everybody on YouTube by saying, hey, you need to label your videos and your channel if it's for kids or not. And now, now that he gave me his little mini rant, let me, let me explain to you why him and many other YouTubers should be this angry. Because now, number one, the first thing's first. This cuts off a whole market of YouTube. Because, like, remember, like, you know how there's gaming videos and how they're just for all ages? Like, let's say Markiplier, for example. Markiplier doesn't make videos that outright, like, he doesn't make videos that outright, you can say, only adults should watch this or only kids should watch this. He makes videos that you can watch if you're 13, 22, 45, however old you are, male or female. He just makes videos that people in period in general can enjoy. Now he has to label his videos, can kids watch this? Which, and let, just just for reference, legally, under the age of 8 of 13 is kid, child, children, between... 13 and 18 is teen, then 18 and up, I mean 13 and 17 is teen, then 18 and up, 
that's a uh, Adele, then I think it's like depending on what the situation, the government agencies, etc. 55 to 65 and up somewhere in between that range will be the starting age and up is senior so just just for clarity so now the fact that you have to let me tell you what they do when you label label your video yes it's for children because also like you said they got sued for 75 million dollars youtube now it's at the point to where youtube is like look we did just enough so that if anything happens and anybody lies or anybody is caught lying about mislabeling a video, the FTC is going to sue you directly. So, you know how before it was basically, uh, you basically had to, like, steal a song, like, steal a song from Lil Wayne or, like, like do something really big, like, upload a whole movie for free in order to get sued yeah. for copyright, right? Now, if you mislabel your children is that is is or isn't for kids when it is or isn't for kids, now guess what? You can be sued for a minimum, minimum. This is the FTC suing for a minimum of forty five thousand dollars, forty five thousand dollar minimum. Basically. If you mislabel your video, the FTC is suing you. Now, one thing I just thought about. Does this only apply to Americans or is this worldwide YouTube? Because if this only applies to Americans, well, then I could just get a VPN and switch my country name, country to Sweden or something. But if this applies to YouTube as a whole, that's kind of unfair. Because what if I live in a country where there is no laws about that? Now you're going to subject me to American laws? Then it starts to get political. Then, uh, then now let me run down what it does. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Let me run down what it does. It takes you, it puts, now YouTube is officially separated into two different algorithms. Children's videos don't have an algorithm. They're just there and they're, they're, they're just labeled children. Then the actual algorithm is based on the data collection that YouTube doesn't understand. Yeah, their own algorithm. YouTube doesn't understand. Yeah, we just use bots all day. That in for a second. Yeah, hold it. Yeah. They created a no. They created a self learning model. Yeah, they literally they literally came out and said, like just straight up said, yeah, we we don't know how it works. We made it. Yeah, we made it. We designed it. We know the framework, but how it actually works, and we don't know. But anyway, so it split into the teen and up algorithm and the kids algorithm where like i said the since they're not allowed to collect data on you is just there just there then on top of that if you have it labeled for kids there's no comment section which that i can understand right because the main idea is to avoid anything that mixes data collection and children why they want to separate data collection and children look i'm not a lawyer i don't know why but that's the goal. So you can't use iCards. You can't use end screen cards. You can't use uh. You can't notifications. Use noti like the notifications, like the video, it won't notify people when your video uploads. Number one, the biggest one is the notification one, because the other ones, even though they're not like optimal, I can at least give you a a base level explanation of why that makes sense but the notification one first off since 20 what when they whenever they implemented the notification system since then the system has been broken to this day and every time they fix it something else is just wrong with it so that system has never worked in the first place and then you're gonna just make it not work even more like literally there's no reason for anybody any reason for anybody to mark their video yes it's for kids and also if any minors appear in your video eight 18 i mean 17 and under if minors appear in your video 17 and under you automatically have to mark it as yes it's for children really really and like yo that just makes me so heated because that really messes with people money like it really does and but let me let me let me go over the reasons why each and every one of the ones that they blocked off they blocked off so for comments 
they don't want like this one i'm pretty sure you're familiar with they don't want like pedophiles or anything in the comments like <laughs> Hey kids, give me your addresses and I'll come deliver you free candy. Yeah. Like they don't want nothing like that happening. <laughs> like they don't want nothing like that happening or people commenting nude stuff under children's videos. Cause I'm not. I'm gonna be honest with you. There were a lot of people doing that and reporting comments. Yes, it works, but at the same time, it doesn't work. It works because they will take down the comment if it's actually lewd or it's like inappropriate. But at the same time, it doesn't work. Because what they do is they just create a new account and <laughs> Like they just put the comment back right back up there. Put something even worse back up there. Like, it, it, like that's just gonna happen regardless. Like if you fall under any category that isn't male, you're basically subject to this. So female, children, female children the worst oh female children lesbian oh god don't even make a youtube channel at that point because the whole comment section is just gonna be your female child lesbian pretty much address yeah exactly so like the comment section i can understand the uh in screen cards and the i cards there are i cards and in screen cards that um suggest you videos based on your view history slash watch history so that i can understand the one it was something else i was kind of upset about yeah. oh the ads this is the stupid part so instead of personalized ads it's contextualized ads now for those of you who really don't see a difference because truthfully speaking there really isn't much of a difference personalized ads are based on your watch history and stuff like that so if you watch a lot of video game video game stuff instead of, like why would you recommend uh <clears throat> let's see let's see makeup stuff to somebody who watches mostly video game stuff on youtube like algorithmically speaking that's pretty dumb so they'll recommend you game so if you watch a lot of gaming videos they'll recommend you gaming as Oh, Death Stranding is coming out. Boom. If you like mature games, boom. Like I said, Death Stranding, kid games, maybe Mario and Sonic games or something. <laughs> Sonic games, getting ads. Ha, that's funny. But they'll recommend you like Mario games or something. Like personalized ads. Contextualized ads are whatever your video is about or whatever products you're using your video, even if you're not sponsored, that'll be the ads on the beginning of your video. So if you're playing, uh, Barbie butthole liquor. If there's an ad for Barbie butthole liquor, then yeah, that's gonna be the ad on the beginning of the video. So yeah, um, I'm gonna let cause uh, what's his, what's his name? Oh, Alpha Priest doesn't like YouTube, so he doesn't know. And uh, Blue M does YouTube, so I'll let him speak on that a little bit more. Go and yeah, into his video. yeah. But here's another thing. If you got, if anyone does like animation videos or like toy videos with like characters like sonic mario like those are the kids are look like that yeah they're gonna they're gonna not monetize you but they're gonna basically do the same thing it, it's gonna be labeled for kids yeah, yeah so stuff like Nsaycom, um i already labeled my channel as not for kids but there's a good chance of the channel disappearing after a while so yeah, that's true. Cause, like I said, cause like I said about the minors thing, seventeen and under is considered for minors. No matter what the content of the video is, it's considered for kids. So, so all my old videos, if they get flagged and taken down, yeah. Cause a lot of people have been doing YouTube for a while, like me, for example, doing YouTube since I was like what, 15, 14, something like that. Those videos have a risk of being flagged yeah. and taken down. So here's your digestion, everybody. Move to Daily Motion or Vimeo. Oh, that's one thing. Good thing you said that, cause that reminded me. The reason why YouTube is out of pocket like this. Because really, YouTube has been doing a lot of stuff that you, right now, YouTube is feeling like Bethesda without competition. They can literally do stuff that make you think, because the difference between Bethesda and YouTube is that you do pay for each of Bethesda games, so, but, 
But doesn't YouTube are all are both on an idiocracy streak where it makes me feel like they're purposely trying to make it so that I don't want to give them my money and buy their products? Cause YouTube, like he said, Vimeo and Daily Motion. When you think of video streaming websites, like in terms of me, a con a content creator, uploading a video onto there to entertain people nobody goes dang i want to make money off of uploading videos www.dailymotion.com that doesn't exist like, that no, doesn't no, exist does that. so yeah because in daily the sad thing is daily motion and vimeo are the closest competition to youtube and youtube is up here daily motion and vimeo are right here so that that's a big gap and then everybody else is like, hey, To the floor. Hey, this is, oh, that, this oh. is just me tapping on the floor. Oh, like, the this floor. is me, like, stopping on the floor. That's where they yeah, are. that's where they're at. So YouTube has no real competition. So if YouTube won, they can go, oh, hey, in order to be on this website, you got to smoke crack. And the, nobody's going to go, well, ah, time to move to Daily Motion because YouTube is yeah. moving to work. So... People are going to flock to YouTube. Just how it is. Just how it is. So yeah, this is really gonna mess with a lot of people's pockets. A lot, a lot of people's pockets. That's why from day one, I've heard a lot of people saying like, "Hey, don't make YouTube your primary source of income. Never put all your eggs in one basket. Because who says YouTube is gonna last forever?" The type of stuff YouTube has to do and YouTube is doing right now, yeah, nah, I don't, I don't think it's gonna last that long. Cause like, one thing I also noticed is America is treating YouTube like, yeah, they're making a lot of money. Let's, let's, let's take a piece of that. Oh, y'all doing this? All right, pay a fine. Oh, y'all doing this? Stop that food. You make you pay a fine. Oh, y'all doing this? Pay a fine. So. America's really taxing and cracking and buckling down on YouTube in ways that are bad for YouTube because that change right there for YouTube is just not good for YouTube at all because that makes it way harder for people to make their videos so that everybody can see it because like I said for example Mark Suppliers, the Jacksepticeyes like for like to be clear they're already solidified people are going to watch their stuff always but for the people who make that type of content who are smaller channels you're basically like youtube is making it so that you can't grow on their platform like it's either you've already grown on youtube or wherever you're at you're just stuck right there meanwhile every you pewdiepie has 50 million subscribers <sighs> And there's people who have been doing a way more interesting content and things that deserve to be watched way more. Zero new subscribers. It's like, come on, I'm not undermining the man's talent, but can y'all please fix the algorithm and make it so that, can y'all please actually work on the algorithm instead of making it self-learning? Because this self-learning algorithm has not been working, YouTube, like seriously. And again, YouTube don't have to listen to my advice because again who you gonna like YouTube has this Stockholm Syndrome type of thing effect on people it's like oh yeah you gonna leave YouTube and do what go gonna, go, gonna go to Vimeo like, no. no gonna go to Meta Cafe what you gonna do <laughs> like like but half of y'all probably like Meta Cafe who what y'all gonna do make your own YouTube yeah alright let's see how many people Look at how many uh, sites there are like YouTube, and let's see how many are successful. Also, any any anytime somebody creates a video streaming service, a free video streaming service, what's the first thing they do? They say, "Oh, it's the YouTube blah 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 blah." YouTube is a re as a highly recognizable brand. YouTube is so popular, grandmas use and sign up for YouTube regularly. That's how you know a brand is popular. Like you laughing, but I'm serious. Like for example, Facebook. Facebook got big when, like, young kids... Remember when Facebook was only for teenagers? Oh, yes. Really? And older people started... Yeah, then older people started saying, Hey, McAfee looks interesting. And let me play that. Oh, this game is actually interesting. 
Let me play Farmville. Let me play this. Let me play that. So, yeah. Then all those people who were using Facebook when they were younger grew up and kept using Facebook. So, hey. Anyway, guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. For music recommendations, uh, I have Trey, Ari Linux, PHO, uh, damn, what's the Dreezy project I listen to? I don't remember right now, but two Ari Linux projects, PHO and, uh, Shea Butter Baby. Boom. And for, uh, Webtoons, System 32 Comics. That's my recommendation. And for... This is a thing, I'm, I'm not gonna make it a thing, but I'm gonna do it every once in a while. I'm gonna call it the who rap time section. So like, who the who section is where, like all of us, I'll start for this time, but all of us recommend something from like a smaller creator or something. Like for example, smaller musician. Um, this time I'm gonna be recommending a rapper again. Lil Ray two times. Uh, he, I mean, li literally just searching. He's a pretty cool dude. I met him in real life. He's chill. So yeah, check his stuff out. He has a channel. I'll leave the link down if I remember. I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, guys. Uh, I don't know. It's something about how you're not gonna be safe here. You, you should be concerned about your safety. And we welcome you with open arms, or at least they do. Uh, they, we welcome you with closed fists. That's what we open palms. The only thing open is our palms. Open hearts? Nah, boy. My heart stitches. Especially when you're a complicated timeline. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Just remember, when you come here, you're not safe. Because here, mm -hmm. nobody's safe. RIP, everyone. <laughs> Why am I peeing, didn't you? Yeah, I'm gonna give well, you said is I wanted you to take your panties off and stroke your Will big you just, long. Like, slip your shirt off, please. You didn't even have to take your bra off. Just slip your shirt off for two seconds. Oh, it'll make me none sign. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking about it. <laughs>